Your Royal Highness, my dear sister, First Lady of um, the Republic, Rwanda, she said I should not call her auntie. I'm now crying. Your Excellency, my dear husband, retired Brigadier Julius Maribio, Excellencies, my dear sisters, the Secretary General of the Commonwealth, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Let me start by thanking all of us who have refused to stay silent about violence against women. Our voices and our efforts are the only source of hope for our survivors and our helpless victims today. We must stand up, we must advocate, and we must mobilize communities, stakeholders, government, development partners, decision and policy makers to bring concerted action to stop this global menace, because this is a global menace. We must start with sustained local and national actions driven by a clear agenda for all. You know, when we come to this meeting, there must be an agenda for women. Why must it be an agenda for women? Why won't we just come and celebrate women? Why will they not just allow us to take our rightful places and just sit as human beings, as people who were part of this global family so that we can feel safe and be safe because that's not a privilege. That is every woman's right. I want to take this opportunity, first of all, to thank His Excellency, retired Brigadier Julius Madabio, not because he is my husband, but because he is one man who have declared national emergency on rape and sexual violence against women in Sierra Leone. He had established a one-stop center for survivors of rape. He has implemented a national male involvement strategy so young men see themselves as critical agents of change. That's very important because if we come here as women and we decide to talk to one another, we're wasting our time. We need to talk to the other party, and the other party are the men. We need to get the men involved in what we do. We need to nurture our sons so they understand the value of a woman. Mr. President, I want to say thank you so very much. Now, we have reviewed the Sexual Offenses Act to provide for a faster trial and a stiffer penalties. We don't want to have people in prison, but we're looking for solution in Sierra Leone. And we have established a sexual offenses model court that has registered higher conviction rate. Now offenders are tried faster and kept in jail away from other victims for a minimum of 15 years under the leadership of His Excellency retired Brigadier Julius Mandeville. We have also intensified our public advocacy around violence against women and girls. With my Hands Off Our Girls national campaign in Sierra Leone, we urge communities to be no longer complicit or to be bystanders. We emphasize that we all have an obligation to oppose and to seize harmful cultural practices and attitude, and we have fully mobilized our communities we have gotten all our communities involved, especially people in authorities, such like the paramount chiefs, our religious leaders, the wives of paramount chiefs, the teachers, the security forces, civil society organization, the media, and the school children themselves. The Hands of Our Girls campaign has now become a national platform where the state and non-state actors have the opportunity to have direct conversation with our girls on issues relating to their rights, their dignity, and their health. Education is a very huge factor if we are talking about gender equality around the world. 
In, in Sierra Leone today, education is a great tool of empowerment for our girls. We worked, my office worked with the government of Sierra Leone in supporting of enrolling more girls in the free quality education. We also campaigned for retention and the completion of all girls. Also because girls lose almost 80 learning days a year as a result of the stigma around menstruation, my office has provided free sanitary pads and dignity kits for school-going girls and we continue to bring awareness. We continue to raise awareness on menstrual hygiene because that is also another taboo subject in Africa. We have campaigned against early marriage. Early marriage in my book, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen, is a legalized way of saying rape is acceptable. We cannot allow our kids to be forced into any form of early marriage because that is rape. We are campaigning against teenage pregnancy and child trafficking. And the government have overturned the ban on pregnant girls in school as part of our radical inclusion strategy. Well, with this radical inclusion strategy, does it mean the government of Sierra Leone wants our girls to be pregnant? But in a situation where a girl is raped, not because of their making, but they are raped and then they become pregnant, what do you do? Do you victimize them twice? His Excellency feel he cannot leave as a president to see that happen in Sierra Leone. So when a girl is victimized, he will protect them. And we bring them back to school. We make sure they finish their education so they can also be part of nation building. At the national level, the government has laid in parliament a very progressive gender equality and women empowerment law. We are trying to be like Rwanda so that women take the lead. We want to take the lead. Let me close by proposing a number of few steps that I think we can, we can do as a global community. We must make alliances with global partners and intensify local prevention campaign such as we have in Sierra Leone. We must invest in providing services for survivors of violence. We must support Sierra Leone Bill at the, at the United Nations in order to create a collective global accountability mechanism by providing justice for victims of rape, knowing that violence against women and girls are violence, uh, government and human rights issues. It is not just a problem for the woman. This is a national and a global issue. And I think women, if we have World Toilet Day, which is a sanitation issue. We should be able to have a day to allow these women to commemorate, to feel they are part of this world. So we urge all of you who are part of the United Nations and who makes that decision to support Sierra Leone Bid so that a day will be dedicated to rape victims for them to be able to commemorate what they have gone through. We are under no illusion about the enormous struggles and challenges that we face. There is much more to be done, but we have to remain optimistic and relentless in our global and collective actions to end violence against women and girls. We have to speak with one voice. Indeed, unless we speak with one voice, we will not have a solution. And we have to share best practices right across the Commonwealth in the campaign to end violence against women. We cannot have one law for this part of the Commonwealth and another law for the other part of the Commonwealth. We have to speak with one voice. I wish to thank the Commonwealth and my dear sister, Auntie Patricia, for bringing us together and for the No More campaign and for organizing this. But I want to say to Mrs. Kagami, your leadership is one that we will follow. As a young woman trying to feel, feel myself within the space of being a first lady, I want you to know you are a role model to me. I thank all speakers who have contributed all too brilliantly to this insightful conversation today. We are walking out of this room all inspired to do more because doing more means we are saving humanity. I wish to express a special thanks to His Excellency President Paul Kagami 
and the First Lady, Madam Janet Kagami, as well as the government and people of Rwanda for their hospitality and for hosting this event. Let me take this opportunity to also thank my dear husband for his endless support towards the struggle of women in our country, Sierra Leone. As we live here, ladies and gentlemen, let us reflect on this. No more silence to rape. No more silence to early marriage. No more victimization of menstruation for our girls. We know our place as women. We want to take our rightful position. No more, no more, and no more. And I say hands off our girls. Thank you so very much.